Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today is going to be the next stage of my prompt for April. Uh, Vintage Blend Studios, the lovely Susanna, has drawn a bowl of fruit and that's the inspiration for this piece, which is gonna find a home in my uh, journal from the Roxy Creations Gosh, I think it was volume one where we were given prompts and created a page for our journals. And I've got some spare pages. So that's the background of what I'm up to here. In the last video, I pieced down all of the background fabrics. I then found a sashiko um, stencil and drew in, hand fudgies decided to turn up, of course he has, drew in this classic sashiko design and I stitched it in some leftover sashiko thread. So it really has become a multicultural piece. There's bits from everywhere here. So um, now we've got a bit of Japanese stitching. Now the plan is to create the fruit out of some of this camphor quilt and I mentioned that I was really tempted to pull apart and see what the treasures were inside. And it is a case of which one do I pick? I'm just going to have a sneaky little look. That one's not bad. It's going to give me some of the finest, most delicate pieces of fabric. But then the other option is I can use the piece as it is. So I'm just going to have, these were the three left from filming last time. So pears are pretty much yellows and orange. There's not a lot, not a lot of colour pigment there, but I do love that piece. Oh, I just don't know. This one get, will give me green leaves without it being opened up. Because if I take that green fabric, it is just gonna disintegrate. There'll be nothing left where I could cut myself some green leaves really easily. There's a charcoal-y blue maybe tone in there. You can sort of see it through there, which is not much help for a pear. There is a yellow floral in there, a check, and then this creamy one on top, which is literally going to disintegrate. Don't know, I'm tempted to use that as my leaves. The other thing I get, if I don't pull it apart, is the beautiful stitching. That could be a pearish color. I don't know. Oh, I don't know, decisions. Let's have a look at the pears. Now the plan was to increase this in size and I went to do that and I just could not remember how to increase it. I was pushing all the buttons and I'm like, oh gosh, I did this a week ago. And then I got sidetracked and thought, why am I doing that? I could just draw it. So the plan is to just have a little fiddle with a pear shape. Like seriously, can't be that hard to draw. Maybe it is. <laughs> And then is it the right size? Do we want to go bigger? Don't know. Let's just fiddle around. Sort of the shape. This needs to be a little bit fatter through there. out just to give me a bit of a feel for its size before I start cutting into fabric I just want to have a play with some paper and see you know maybe a little bit of composition I'm really 
fixated on pears, but there's actually an apple there as well. So the lines don't interfere with my vision. <laughs> sort of feel like it could lean there. Let's have a look at an apple. Classic apple. It's sort of got that if I muck around with an apple, then I've got to find some red fabric. I guess I could do a green apple. Let's get the general gist of a shape. I don't have any red fabric in that um, camphor quilt. I don't really want to change my fabrics. I could do a green apple. We do have green. That would make it a bit different, wouldn't it? He comes fudgy. He was napping. He hears me talking to you guys. Hey, Bliss Bliss. Hops up out of bed, comes for a wander over, a saunter. Want to get that a little bit more rounded. I think I like about apple shapes is Susanna had a play with the inside of an apple. We could do that with a pear as well. I sort of feel like that needs to be a little bit smaller. Like I said, it's only paper, so if we cut off too much, We just keep chopping until we have nothing left. <laughs> and then we get another piece of paper and we do it again. I probably could have found a, a nice piece of fruit on the internet, but I didn't. Look, it's getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> this apple's getting a little bit smaller. doesn't look like an apple. <laughs> Let's get a curve. That's not bad. So if we did an apple and a pear, and then let's get the scrappy bits out of the way. Then we highlight the center of the apple. Yeah, Puss Puss, he's just had a drink of water. You probably couldn't hear him lapping. Don't know if I've got an eraser in our little box of tricks here. Oh yeah, I do. Oh, I Kevin forbid that I'm that organized. That's hilarious. So we've got the center of our apple. Then we could do a second smaller center as it sort of starts changing its shape. And then we've got these seeds. So we can certainly make that feel interesting. Now the pear, let's do a similar thing. Let's make these cut pears. And use fabric layers to get our story across that we're looking into the center of a pear. And then I think it gets quite small. And then there's seeds in there. That doesn't look right. I might have to do a little bit of research on the pear. But that's not bad. It certainly makes them look interesting. Do we need a third fruit? Where's that little, little pear? Still not convinced of my composition. So let's play with another pear. So I don't have to fill the space, am I? Am I um, worrying about 
the top of my panel. And dragging my pair up there. Do I need to? Don't mind that guy there. And then do I bring the apple to the front? See, there's that composition of three. A full pair, a cut pair. Don't mind that, guys. And then the, the stems and things come through like that. With some leaves. This guy can have his leaves up here. This little guy here. We'll do like Susanna's got two little leaves on that guy there. So we'll take inspiration from that little top to it. Tuck in the leaf in behind. Which can be some fabric or lace or... Yeah, I don't mind that. Hmm. Pretty happy with that. I can always adjust the, the tops when we get to them. Let's have a look at the fabrics now. We've got to make a decision. I think this is a really good pair, that there. I don't know if I like that dark thread there. It's like a tacking thread. I wonder what that was all about. I'm going to remove that, but I do like that green line. Maybe it just pops onto the pair a little bit. There we go. We're just going to do it. We're just going to do it. We're going to cut this out, be strong, be brave, and just chop it. This will be the full pair, but then again, I might make him the pair that we see the centre too. Who knows? The girl doesn't want to commit to anything just yet. She's toying with lots of different ideas. There we go. One pair. Hello, little pair. Okay. So the question is, the second pair... Should we revisit the colours? Like I really like that shading there. You know, the pear's not quite ripe. But this one is different again. Let me do it in the soft pinky colours on the other side. Like the inside of the pear. I don't know. I think I'm going to, you know. I've chopped into this piece already, so I don't feel like I'm either be the right colour or it won't. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> I really like it. Now the apple. 
What are we gonna do for the apple? We really need that red tone. Like I could make him a green apple. Let's have a look through the fabric. I just don't recall seeing a red in there, to be honest. was a pink. An orange. Should have made it an orange. It's definitely not red. We could sneak that guy in. Look at the patch on that. Oh my goodness. How adorable. Wonder if I could include that as part of the seeds. How, ooh, how tricky can the girl get? If we got we got the apple out of the red, that gives us the pink. And then this centerpiece is that. And then the seeds. Oh yeah, let's do that, guys. And I might stay down this corner. Be a bit too tight. I don't really like that there. There's all the red here over here. Oh, that's pretty. It's a shame to cover the red. What am I going to do? So you're just going to see a tiny little edge. So I don't really need red, really, but I need an edge of red. Should I consider bringing in a fabric just to get us that pop of red? Hang on, let's go to the bucket of general scraps. It's not exactly camphor quilt if we do that. anything in there that's old that would get me red sorry guys you're out of shot not really I do have that it's not red we need like a smidgen of red um, now I've got fabric falling everywhere there's nothing red in that see I've got a box of general fabrics let's have a look in the french container because see that maybe there's a bit in here like that and that here we go that just gives us that little frame of red we need and they're old so they certainly do work Oh, they look like different creatures, but don't they? Hmm. You know, it just doesn't quite... Maybe I'll forget about the apple. Can you hear my brain thinking? I'm thinking I'm going to forget about the apple, to be honest. I can always add it if I come across something. There we go. It's not lost. See, the, the problem I've got with this is it's such a, a beautiful piece of camphor. I'd want to show that as my red apple down the bottom here. That would probably make a good strawberry. But I really like the idea of exploring the inside of an apple, which I can do with this pear, because we've got these pear tones. You're probably thinking, just move on girl and make a decision, but I can't. 
The apple is going to sit to one side. We're going to stay with the pears. I do like the tone of this. And I do like the fact that I could play with that. Okay. Let's get the pears stitched down. And that gives me a chance to have a little think. I'm thinking we're going to open up the center of one of these pairs, not both. But before we do that, let's get these little guys stitched down. Maybe that's where we explore. Where's that piece of... Okay, going off on a tangent, let's pin that into place. I like their position. They need not touch that red line, I don't think, because we might bring a piece of lace in there to... See, we've cut into this one piece of... Let's put these away. All right, go on. Let's have a look. Where's a quick unpick? Do I have a quick unpick? Yep. This is Grandma's quick unpick that she had made for ripping seams when making a <laughs> wedding dress. I don't know if it's because of the longer handle was good in her hand, but that point, I don't know where that's come from. Let's have a little look at what we've inherited here in the way of fabrics. Because what I'm thinking is if we can make our um, pears look interesting with some more pieces laying on top you know so I'm going to just pull out the stitching gosh the thread always just disintegrates like these things are so well used and old they just break before they pull out of the actual quilt itself. See even these little red pieces of fibres can be stitched down. It's like quite quite fun at what you can do with all your bits and bobs when you pull these things apart. Okay let's see what we've got here. I like that soft pinky tone which is what that guy is made up of. So there would be an opportunity to make that the open one with the seeds. It sort of feels a bit more pear like that colour. Let's, no decisions yet. Let's just see what we've got in the way of goodies here. Get this stitching out. Interesting how they start a new thread by weaving it through across the old thread. Okay, got a little bit of stitching down here. A nice creamy tone would be good. The flesh of the pear is cream. At least if we just do this little bit down this bottom here, we can see, see what's in there and then decide whether we aim for a bigger piece. I think I've got most of it out now. Are you ready for the drum roll? This video might just be all about pulling apart this gorgeous piece of old camphor quilt. More fun than stitching them down. Okay, so we've got this pink fabric on top, which is as thin as thin, which then reveals this little check fabric. Look, a little pink. Oh, that's not a bad one. That's soft. Oh, look at that. Maybe I should pull this apart. 
and that's a good colour for inside, which is that. This looks different when it's softer. Okay, let's keep going. There's some interesting treasures in there that maybe, maybe we could do a strawberry with that. Or maybe it's enough to get an apple, I don't know. Or I just stay with pears. Hang on for the ride, guys. You know how it goes. Okay, let's get this guy out. Maybe I should pause the video. Fiddle around with this camper stitch. And feel the fibers of the fabric disintegrating like there's that feeling of it's about to turn into dust and be gone forever got to save it don't we it's very old imagine the stories this quilt can tell has kept someone warm I've got all these romantic stories in my head you know the small child nestled in under this quilt that gave them such comfort it might have just been lying on the back of a seat in a truck for years too <laughs> you just don't know do you let's go with the romantic story a small little girl was wrapped up in this all of her life then her children then her children so we've got a real romantic view on it <laughs> gee that's strong what if, how did grandma get that in there it's not coming out it's actually pretty good it's like feels good in my hand because it's not you know you get quick unpicks and they're tiny but this was another one that i had that come out of her stuff but i don't think she's used it much it's this was in her sewing machine drawer. I got her old Singer sewing machine and the drawer, the top drawer was full of all sorts of old sewing implements and this was in there. And I thought, I remember seeing her ripping seams with this. good point and it's curved <laughs> isn't it funny so I figured if it was in that drawer she was using it and I'm pretty sure I can remember seeing her pulling seams out she was always salvaging fabric too from old clothes well not even old clothes just clothes that need to be remodeled The memories. I wonder how we're going for time. I'm probably using up valuable time that could be. You guys are just sitting there stitching anyway. Hanging out. Should be all going off and doing some housework, shouldn't we? But no. I'm looking through the doors of my room at my husband and he's playing a game where he tames dinosaurs in another world and rides them around on quests. So he too is just, we just got one of those days. We're just doing nothing. Should be doing something, but we're doing nothing. <laughs> They're the best days. We raced around the last couple of days. So if you've guessed, probably by my voice, we're up at Barham at the moment. So we spent a couple of days racing around. We went into town and 
met with a fencing guy and had a look at the profiles that we could pick from for fencing and what else did we do? Picked up a couple of filing cabinets. Uh, what else did we do? Oh, got, got a few groceries. We're here for a week or so. There's a few trades happening. The plumbers are coming to connect the shed up to the house plumbing system. There's a toilet and shower going into the shed. So all of those trenches need to be dug. We picked up the council permit to actually move forward with the project because they have to sign off on it and make sure it meets code. So that's all being got. Any day now a bobcat and the plumber will turn up to dig the trenches because all the plumbing from the shed needs to be connected and taken out to the footpath so the water can get away. So we did that. What else did we do? I don't know, just meeting and greeting trades and give them the deposits and then they're happy to proceed with us, all that type of thing. Spent the day racing around Harvey Bay doing that. So today we sort of feel like, eh. Don't feel like doing much. I feel like stitching pairs, so that's what it is. I'm picking, I'm picking a camphor quilt, which is riveting viewing. You know, they sort of look like seeds, don't they? I'm just going to nibble out that bit. I don't know. I just feel like I need to save that before I go and pull it all out. There's a little bit there, but that's not really going to affect much. Let's put the needle back before it gets mixed up in the scraps. Now let's just scoot sideways over here a little bit. I'd say that's probably enough space to get what we need. I can't imagine I need to go any further than that so we'll leave that intact here we go oh, how exciting oh, we've got a piece look at this little treasure here oh you beautiful little thing oh it's so dainty we've got a stitch here it's like getting a Christmas present this is Okay, let's get all that little bits of treasure to one side, out of my way. Here we go. Morsel number one. Can you just come up a little bit, guys? Just a little bit so you can see them all laid out. Morsel number two little check fabric I'll just do that it's so delicate don't want it to get lost morsel number three that has potential for an apple morsel four. Ooh, that's actually got some stripes in it that there feels a bit like it could be the internals of a pear there's this one. Look at you. Do we make that the apple? And don't open it up. I don't know. I don't know. To me, that could be even the internals, but it's very similar to this little pair here. 
So I'd be probably reluctant to do that. I'd probably do this one. I oh, see that's too similar. Maybe I do need to do that and then bring that in. Yeah, that's what we need to do. Let's, let's just shape ourselves a little bit of a center of a pear routine happening here. Oh yeah, I like that. Is that in camera? Let's just pull me down a little bit. That gives me that organic shape. Then I think we might use that next. So it's just gonna be layers of working our way into the center of this pear. Oh yeah, yes, 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 yes. So he's gonna stay as he is. We've got this green, the camphor, I'm not going to muck around with that. Now, where do we go from here? That's too similar. Do we put a little piece of this in the center? We could, you know. Yeah, let's do it. This will just break it up a little bit. Bring in another color. Just mess it up a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Love it. Love it. All right. Let's talk apples. Get rid of this for now. Can we pull off an apple? Where's the apple? I think we can. And I think I'm going to do him out of that. I'm gonna do him out of this. He might end up going a little bit bigger because I'm thinking Let's just trim him out a little bit bigger than what we need. We can always bring him down in scale. Because I'm thinking I'd do another cut of that other red. Put him there. Then we do one that's truer to this size and that gets us two reds on the perimeter which I think will be quite pretty and if it doesn't look any good we just put the apple to one side and pretend it never happened all right the apple will just slide out of camera shot <laughs> and be gone Saw nothing. What apple? Who said apple? Now we lay that in there. Needs to be a little bit smaller. That's artistic, all right. It's a still life, but not a realistic one. <laughs> that in there, yes. Still needs a little bit of trimming. Maybe I just flip it over, maybe that shapes. No, that's better. I might just lay it there and use my pen 
Just to give me a bit of a hint, we need that little corner off. I might do it, you know. One little piece of camphor quilt has gone so far. I feel like I need just a smidgen off there. There we go. Oh, I love it. Is that not an apple? Even if we don't open it up, it's looking like an apple. You know what I mean? So, where are we at now? Maybe I could go back into this pink. Use that in the center. Looks like we're opening it up. Let's trim this guy down. This is so delicate and so precious. I want to make sure that I cut pretty much on the spot, you know, like let's be. So this is now the center. Let's get these little morsels out of the way. That goes there and that goes there. Yes. stitch all this down so that it doesn't just disintegrate lots of invisible stitch to make it secured and I might seat that down into there yep oh, love it okay we could even go closer in again for the seeds and I could pinch a bit out of that orangey fabric I think or the yellowy fabric to give us the little center where the, the seeds sit down in there this guy let's just find a little corner somewhere because we don't need much Love all the little perforated holes in these little pieces of fabric. They're so fine. Very lightweight cloth I've used in this. Tiny little heart for the center. What's the shape that the bottom should look like? Well, that'll do. Okay. Oh, we made it. So I think, let's put a pin in there. I think I will probably do stitching. Now I'm talking stitching now. Work my way around to the center. And I'll do the same here, but I might do different types of stitches. I feel like that could be trimmed down a little bit. then have a think about the seeds and where the seeds are sitting oh look at these little yummy little bits i think we made it there guys we've we've got our apple in he was looking shaky there for a bit i've got a hang of a mess on my desk of disintegrating camphor quilt got some gorgeous little pieces now let's bring that back into shot um, now this was an idea I had for seeds but no that would be good as strawberry seeds no I think I need to do something a little bit more um, distinctive with it so how am I going to look after this I might ball clip it okay hang on guys let's just organize our morsels hey 
so that if I'm looking for camphor quilt, one rainy day, they're there. Because you just never know. That, I couldn't believe it when I saw that colour. And that one, like there was an apple buried in there. Delicate, delicate, delicate. Now I think I've got a little ball clip. There we go. Um, in my little stationary box of tricks, I've got a little ball clip. Alrighty. So. I guess the leaves too. See, this is where I'm getting that hoarding feeling. If we don't nibble into that, we embroider the leaves. Or I go looking for a fabric that'll do the job, you know, without destroying another piece of camphor quilt. We'll see how it goes. I think the next thing, so I've got a Thing of ought sitting here from doing the um, embroideries. I don't know if I want to use DMC thread. I like the pearl cotton because it's one strand. It sort of um, is nice to stitch this type of work with. So what I might do first, look, just slow down girl is we need some invisible stitches here to hold, hold this work of art. <laughs> so let's get that done. How are we going for time? I feel like I went into a zone there. Oh my goodness. Oh, all right. This is just going to be invisible stitch now. And then in the next video, I'll dig out some threads. Like I'm sort of envisioning a red or a, a, a tone of thread for this that is apple-y. It's, <laughs> it's not even a word. Let's just get it secure because the last thing I want to do is waltz off into the lounge room to do a bit of stitching and find myself dropping half of me little treasures. I can just see it. It's when you um, I just had a thought. I've had two thoughts. First thought, finish the sense. Um, when you have piece something together and you get to where you're going to sit and stitch and you've got a, an element missing and then you're like, well, where did that go? So you have a bit of a look, you can't find it. And then you realise it's stuck to your skirt or your shirt. That was the thought, which has led me to another thought. How many of you have got to the grocery store and realise you've got four or five pins stuck in your shirt? <laughs> oh, it's pretty funny. And then you're talking to a neighbour who you've bumped into and they're like, uh, Corinne, your shirt's full of threads and pins. Now I'm just going to head out to the perimeter, especially this delicate one. Gosh, it's so fine. Um, I guess the other thing I need to consider in the next video, if I'm going to add some lace <coughs> to add even more texture to the piece. So I need to dig out Some of those types of products and some threads that'll be the next video maybe we put a little bit of lace in here like you get to the the creamy fleshy part of the fruit we could even use lace for the stems that'd be pretty 
Oh, what am I doing here? Look, I've puckered it up. Concentrate on what you're doing, girl. My pear has kicked up in the air there. He's not sitting flat. So we need a pin. <clears throat> if I just bring that down, I sort of feel like it needs to be all seated low, like the seeds are in the bottom part. I don't know. I haven't looked at the layout of the inside of these two to see if I'm even close to making it look like what they actually look like in nature is what I'm trying to say. Does it matter? Probably not. As long as I know their pairs. <clears throat> That's got it. Okay, this is really just about securing those very delicate pieces. Oh, I couldn't believe those colours when they popped out. I felt like I was competing with that red line a little bit. I'm happy with that. I think I think that little guy is very obvious. the tiniest of stitches and it's the most fragile fabric that it seriously would not take much for all of this just to disintegrate but I think once we embellish it with some stitches you know what would be beautiful with this is your free motion stitching where you get on the sewing machine and you release the the foot that keeps it going in that one direction there's usually a lever or a switch and then that allows the sewing machine to go everywhere. This would be gorgeous then with a thread coming over it all, you know, just follow the design. Tummy rumbling must be time for brunch. Must be close to the hour. Gosh, it goes so quick. By the time I think things through, it's blooming time to pack up. That's what I hate about classes and things too. You just get into the rhythm of it and they go, okay, 15 minutes before the end of the class. And you're like, no. I want to stay here forever. And it might just come down into here. I still cannot believe this is the one piece of camphor quilt. It's unbelievable. <clears throat> They're like little treasures, aren't they? little hidden treasures and remember it's the romantic story where many children have snuggled under it for warmth it hasn't been a quilt sitting on the back of a tractor seat plowing the paddock could have been a quilt in a truck and the wife made it to remind the husband that she was at home thinking of him. See, there you go. There's a romantic version of the quilt. Concentrate on the needle, girl. You're going to end up... This is one of Reg's cousins. Could nearly be Reg. 
I don't know where Reg is. Reg has disappeared. He's gone walk about. <laughs> I'm still convinced he's in the arm of the couch in Brisbane. Last seen in that vicinity. Just have a feeling Reggie is gone. But he's got a few cousins. Someone will pop up and say, well, I'm your new Reg. There we go. I think now I'm to the point where it's all secured and I'll just go around my little pairs and really make sure, you know, that they're stitched in. I might just use this thread to that top. I love how on the side of that, you get a hint of all of that. It's incredible. I'm very impressed with myself, guys. I'm feeling quite chuffed. Just never know where these projects are gonna go. I think we need like a, a hessian twiggy stick. Didn't I see some twine somewhere? When I was making the last video, it was in the Japanese. I might leave that up there so I can stick, stick a stick in there. Actually, the Japanese fabrics is just to the side of me. Hold that thought. How are we going for time? Oh, heaps of time. <coughs> yes, that. You want a twiggy, a twiggy feel. Like that, see? That was in that um, box of Japanese fabrics for some reason. Do we put it on top? No, I feel like it needs to be. I'm gonna stitch that in while I'm here. I like it, nice and chunky top to the, because it often is a fairly stick-like thing at the top of a pear, and when they're ripe, it's quite dry and it just drops off. So we're going to put the twig on while we're in this vicinity. There we go, that's not coming out. You know, the other thing is you could peel that down a little bit. Look at that, yeah. Oh, that's not going to do that. Just gonna bend that back so we see the top curled edge, and which will tell you that all of those fabrics are in there. Yay, I love it. Let's make our twig. That's so tall. See that there? Oh, it's like a peak. Now we'll just stitch this little guy down. And then we can add leaves and muck around with it. I'll leave that little bit of excess there and we'll trim it when we know when and where to trim it. It might even be able to stay flat and the, the leaves cover it, but we'll see. We'll see how that plays out, but that's a nice little detail at the top of that pair because they do curve in there so we've now got this little curve at the top showing all of the yummy fabrics that we found inside, which created the apple. And then on the other side, created that. Oh gosh, seriously, really, really cool. All right, guys, might use a little bit of that for there. Just cut that off really. Get that into position. 
and then you might use a little bit down here but I might break it down into a smaller piece for that apple just so it looks a little bit different to that big chunky pear oh. yeah I'm gonna do it that's a bit finer got a stitch there in my way but I think yeah I might bring it into the center of the apple I don't want to force yeah it needs to be just a little one and it's disintegrating. No, I'm going to think of something else there, guys. I'll come up with something. Needs to be finer, I think is the problem. We'll use that for the pear. I will um, toddle off. I'm going to stitch that into place before it disintegrates on me. And then... Um, finish invisible stitching everything down. I need to also get that stitch down. That's bugging me a little bit. And once all that's done, I will be back with maybe some lace and threads in the next video to see. I was actually, there was a thread that came off of this. Where did that get to? Did I see it on the table when I sat down? I think I did. I'll have to go hunting. That thread might do that, is what I'm thinking. So stay tuned. Let me just get a stitch in here and then I can free my hands to actually turn the camera off. Otherwise, you'll be here for another. How long have we been going? Oh, we're all right. I might just stitch it, guys. It's only two minutes past the hour. And I like how it's actually sitting on top of the pear. It doesn't have to be in behind, I guess. creaky chair of all the chairs that I grabbed to bring up to the Barham house to sit on it's the creaky one the chair that I sit on in Brisbane doesn't creak like this it's a different brand this one is a spare chair from the room that I just grabbed the one day and threw it in the van and brought it up to sit on and every time I move adjust my back it creaks anyway side side information there we go we have a stem once again we can trim it to suit the leaves once we work out what we're doing there that'll oh, I like the curve that'll dictate a little bit as well at least Oops. So there'll be five videos required technically for this month. So we'll see how we go. I was tossing around doing a pear for my pear tree. Ah, partridge in a pear tree for my Christmas tree. That's still not ruled out. If this comes together well, then I'll have a bit of time and I can potentially, I like that shape. Pear stems can be a little bit cut at an angle. Lovely. That is not going anywhere. All right, I better go. And leave you guys alone. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.
Okay, guys, bye for now.